Wednesday. There were 12 games on. That's a lot for us to break down, but let's do it, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd, and yes, I live in Melbourne. But I have no idea what a magic is. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com, and you can find me on Twitter as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We're free. And we are available on all platforms. So thumb it up and double bang and leave your comments and ring the notification bell. We're getting towards the end of the season. The show doesn't stop. We roll all the way through, all the way through the off season. My face is going to be in your face or in your ear. My voice is going to be in your ear. I'm just going to be all up in you all the way through. Don't worry. I am not going anywhere. And some might say, that's too much, Josh. I'll see you later. And I get it, but also stick around. Let's talk about Wednesday. Too many games on, but we'll talk about them, 12 of them on. So it can be hard to figure out exactly what did happen throughout those uh, those games. We're going to do our best. I'm not going to. There's no real major news, I don't think, to cover that don't doesn't involve any of the teams that play. So we're just going to go straight into talking about um, the games. The first game was the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Charlotte Hornets. We... Had a, a change in the lineup for the Hornets because the Winter Soldier, Max Struess, returned. Um, Karis Levert moved back to the bench. That's not a big surprise. They do that quite often. So what happened in this one? Well, we had the Hornets, 118, being the Cavs, 111, the final score. Struess played 24 minutes. He had 19 points with five threes and two steals. Honestly, one of his better games. I Would I rush to add Max Struess? I don't think so. If I'm looking for some threes, maybe, but look, that's that's fine. I wouldn't say it's exactly groundbreaking. Solid enough game from um, Jared Allen with 28, uh, sorry, 24 and eight. Well, Garland shot poorly again. He did have 12 assists with five um, uh, five rebounds. And Sam Merrill didn't, weren't really interested in streaming Sam Merrill today. So of course he had 17 points with five threes, and Yang had 14 with four. Interesting. We got 24 minutes from Yang. And 31 minutes from the Koala Evan Mobley. So uh, a little bit of crossover between those two. Mobley had 10, 6, and 6. A pretty disappointing game overall. While we have been Karis Leverted three in a row. Four points, 22%. He had eight assists. He had a block. Mitchell's coming back at the end of the week. I do think that in a lot of cases, you can m- remove Karis Levert from your roster very gently, very calmly. But you could also jack him. Get that! Okoro, well, we're very, very clearly not rostering Isaac Okoro. Seven points in 25 minutes for him. For the Hornets, Brandon Miller, after struggling for a couple of games, or a period, of, a significant period of time, actually, he's been really good the last two, 31 and six with seven triples on 58%. And it was also a better game from Miles Bridges, 17 and five in 41 minutes. He is playing an absolute million minutes at the moment. He had three steals as well. Good games from both Trey Mann and Vasilya Misic. Man played only 29 minutes, but had 17, 1, and 8. Misic had 11, 1, and 2 with two steals. So we talked about with Misic, uh, I think people overreacted a little bit to the drop because he only scored two points last game. And the value in him is being a double-digit assist upside player who's playing 30 minutes a night, and that's exactly what you got here. Big Dick Nick struggled somewhat. He still had 11 and 10 on 100% shooting, so not a disaster, but not what you exactly want. Well, Grant Williams, who'd been pretty poor, had a good one. 16, 7, and 5, steal, block. I don't really trust that. And now we got the sort of equal, exactly equal minutes between Pokiszewski and Bertans. Five points for Bertans in 23, 10 and 7 um, in those 23 for Pokiszewski. They're streamy sort of guys, back end ish sort of guys that you can try, but they're probably, in the end, they end up more as 14 team league options. The second game of the day Brooklyn. The Washington Wizards um, lineup changes galore here. We had Cam Thomas move back into the lineup after one game out with Jalen Wilson moving to the bench for the Nets. And then Denny Avdia replaced John Davis in the lineup. Um, and the future MVP, Kyle Kuzma, returned, sending the sandwich Patrick Baldwin Jr. back to the bench. 
this was a um, interesting game, overtime game, as the Nets pull it out 122-119, the final score over Washington. Thomas was great. 45 minutes, 38 points. He had seven assists. He had a steal and a block. He was elite from both percentages. This is the absolute perfect Cam Thomas scenario. Now, of course, you don't always get this, and he's still not a top 110 player this season, but these are good numbers. And again, me as a noted member, founder, cheerleader of the Cam Thomas Hater Club, he's been much better over the last like six weeks or so. Nicky Claxon's playing a ton of minutes, 37 here, 17 and 13 with three blocks, while Mikael Bridges was also somehow good. He didn't shoot well, 44%, but 19, 6 and 4, two steals, two blocks. What a sight for sore eyes getting a good game out of Bridges is. Schroeder also, he's playing a lot of minutes, 43 of them, 21, 4 and 8, steal block. There was no um, uh, Dennis Smith or Cam Johnson, and that's benefiting Schroeder. What we wanted to see was what they were doing on the bench with the backup big minutes, and Sharp played 14, he had 8 and 5. Clowney played 11, and that was one of four. One and four. He missed all four of his shots. He played a lot of the four here, Clowney. I'm guessing largely because Johnson was out. And then Finney Smith had four points in his 36. We're not looking at him. We continue to watch Trenton Watford in case a bigger opportunity opens up for the Wiz. How about my man? The most annoying player in the world, Jordan Poole. 45 minutes, 38, 7 and 8, 5, 3, 63%. And the thing that... I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. You know what I'm going to say. The thing that annoys me about Jordan Poole is what he is doing right now is literally why I was big on him heading into the season, that he would get assists, he would get good free throw percentage, he would get a lot of points, he would score a lot, he would have a lot of usage, he would hit threes. And then he would roll it, he'd come in and play 28 minutes with 20 usage for the first four months and look completely idiotic. And now, what's going on now? Like, now we're putting up these big numbers, now you do it. The man is a top 50 player over the last two weeks. He's almost into the top 100 for the year. It's so annoying. I would look to add Marv Bagley because Rashawn Holmes hurt his toe again. Zero points, 12 minutes, three rebounds. So a lot of people were quick to add Holmes, understandably so. Uh, now you can go and add Bagley. Kuz played 44 minutes. He had 24, 6, and 10. Good shooting. Great game from him. No defense, of course. Well, Denny Avdia, really sort of this settling into where he needs to be. 38 minutes, 17, and 12. Corey Kispert got a lot of minutes. The man is just not very good. I know that he's widely available, so I, I do think he's worth grabbing, but man, like... 15 points in 40 minutes. He had two rebounds, zero assists, zero steals, zero blocks. Nick Young looks at that and goes, bro, do something that's not shooting. He somehow missed another free throw. He shot 40% from the field. It's just frustrating. It's also frustrating when you get the ins and outs of the lineup. Like Pat Baldwin played three minutes. Dustin Champagne was in the G League. Jared Butler played 21 and went scoreless, but they're going to be nights where these guys play 30. This team is going to be annoying, and they, honestly, they've already started being annoying. I think we can see that already. Today's episode, if I can find where I need to be, today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and for great escapes. Class-exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. You've got Google Maps, the Google Apps, or the Google Play Store, and the Google Assistant built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. It's got room for up to eight and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capabilities. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing when Adventure Calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. So take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go and find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, that is two games down. The next one up is the Golden State Warriors up against the Orlando uh -huh, Magic. That was a sad look, uh -huh, wasn't it? Um... We did have a lineup change in this one for both teams because John Kaminga was out. So Trace Jackson Davis got the start. Draymond moving back to the four. And then with Caleb Houston and Gary Harris out for the Magic, we saw Markel Fultz step back into that starting lineup. The Warriors win it in the end, 101-93 on the road. Gaz Payton started the second half because Draymond Green was ejected four minutes into the game. Three minutes, 36 for Draymond. He had three rebounds. He missed his only shot. Just continual frustration from this bloke all the time. I, In a points league, I, I think he is eminently droppable. 
In a category league, I think that if you've ridden Draymond all this way, it means you value what he brings. So dropping him now doesn't make a ton of sense. He's not going to get suspended here. But there's always the frustration every time he's out there. Steph played 35 minutes here, 17, 4, and 10. Still, the shooting is uh, is off for him. It's off. There was a comment about... And that made me play that Washed Watch music. There was a comment on Barcelona once that some, someone said, is he on Washed Watch? And someone said, how could he possibly be Washed Watch? He's 36 years of age. He's having a uh, shooting slump. They're just not going in. Like, That's, yeah, exactly what Washed Watch means. Like, he's not the same guy. He's obviously not Washed, Steph. But the same level of consistent production... He's just not there anymore. And that is what happens when you get old. That happens. Trace Jackson Davis, 33 minutes, 8, 14, and 3. Steel block, 50% shooting. I just think he needs to be rostered. I've said this for weeks. The absence yesterday was frustrating, but you heard, saw me talk about it earlier on the waiver wire show. Good. Andy Wiggins, what's going on here? 35 minutes, where we go? 23 and 6 with two blocks. That's largely helped by Kaminga being out and Draymond getting ejected. I feel think that Wiggins is probably in the maybe, maybe not, but it is edging towards the maybe. Maybe we go that way. Brandon Pajebski, only 21 minutes. It's an easy jack. Get that garbage out of here. Six and nine for him. Chris Paul also 17 minutes for CP3. Three, three, and four. We talked about him on the Wave of Wire show, and we did put him on the jack-off list. Get that garbage out of here. But that was for points leagues. I think we're in the drop Chris Paul in category league scenario. He can be better than this, obviously. Who cares? We're two and a half weeks away from the end of the year. He's 187th over the last two weeks. He's barely hitting 24 minutes a night. Didn't get anywhere near it here. Not enough upside for me. And I think the same goes with Clay. You can definitely roster Clay, who had 32 minutes in the start, but 15 points, no rebounds, 46% shooting, no free throws. Like, what does he do that's great? He's totally fine to roster, but he's also not someone that you absolutely have to. With Draymond out, we also got 24 Moses Moody minutes. He had 12, 5, and 3. Another one of those sort of marginal hidden gem players that sort of just needs an opportunity. For the Magic, Cole Anthony is rolling, which is awesome because I like Cole Anthony. 26 and 7, 4 assists and 5 threes, 59%. It does help, obviously, that Gary and Caleb Houston are out. And the marginalization of Cole has never made a ton of sense to me. I wouldn't rush to add him, but absolutely for Saturday, yeah. They've got great value on Saturday. Johnny Isaac, 24 minutes, 9 and 5, 2 threes, 1 steal, 2 blocks. A very, very clear ad except, does he play Saturday? Because it's a back-to-back. Or does he play 5 minutes? Or what does he do? Because we love that Saturday. We love the value of that. You'd probably even start John Isaac on Friday. But what if they go 10 minutes each game? That's the risk here. France had 14 and 5. And we talked about Paolo Banquero on the um, fantasy trends slash buy low, sell high saying, yeah, Probably going to doubt a little bit of this with some of his shooting. Well, he had 15, 8, and 5 on 29% shooting and 57 from the line. And that is and remains the problem with him. Markel Fultz started 16 minutes. Hopefully, you didn't rush and add him after he was announced as a starter. He had four points in those 16 minutes, while Wendell Carter played only 19. He had seven and six there, and we do not have to roster him, except if Fultz plays on the back-to-back on Saturday, you stream him in. If Wendell is... Well, no, not if. Well, if Wendell is available, you would use him for Saturday. But as must roster guys... Nah, nah, nah. Don't think we're seeing that. The um, the next game, no lineup changes in this one, but uh, as an ass kicking, the New York Knicks. Imagine being alive for a time when the Knicks drop 145 just in one game, 145 to 101 against the Raptors. For the Knicks, uh, Mitch Robinson did return. A lot of people have rushed to grab him. I don't think you should. He had eight points in 12 minutes. He was 100% shooting. He had two blocks. What he moves into now is like a blocks and rebounds stream guy. I don't think you're going to be getting 25 minutes out of him at any point this week or next week. And to me, that makes it a non-starter, especially considering we just don't know what we're going to get. We only got 19 minutes out of Hartenstein though, which is a little worrying, a little worrying. 15 and four with a steal and a block, but they went almost for no reason, like not for no reason, but they went to a lot of pressures at Chua. 27 minutes for the big sneeze, 19 and 12, one steal, two blocks. That's interesting enough, all that, but... I don't think I'm going to super react to it. While 40 minutes to Deuce McBride in a 40-point victory. He had 29, 3 and 7 with 9 triples on 59%. The man is crushing. You just go with him until at least Ananobi returns. DiVincenzo backed up his 11-3 game with 5 more. 16 and 5, 2 steals, 2 blocks, 5 triples. Well, you know what you're going to get out of Josh Hart? Not much scoring, but other stuff. 7, 6 and 10 with a steal. Jalen Brunson only played the 29 minutes because someone talked about Tom Thibodeau to me on the um, pregame show. And it's very easy to make fun of Tom Thibodeau. I've done it a couple of times in my life, just a couple. But one thing he does do is, even though we can say, well, the guy's coming back, he's going to play a ton of minutes, that's not what Tibbs does. 
Tibbs is like, if you are actually fine, you're playing every minute in the world. But if there's an injury, we are legitimately going to stick to it. Look at Brunson's minutes. Look at Robinson's minutes. He keeps them down. Once you're healthy, go crazy. Go play a million minutes. He's more about risking the player's health from an injury that hasn't happened versus when they've got an injury, he does protect them. And okay, I think it's I think it's right to be fair because he I, there's a lot of nonsense that he does, and we'll call him out. But when he does things correctly, which he does to protect these guys, I think that's that's fair enough as well to talk about. What the bloody hell do we talk about with this Raptors team? Because Garrett Temple played 27 minutes. He had 15 and 6 with three threes and two steals. Shout out to late March basketball. He started because Oshai Baji suffered what looked like a pretty significant injury. They're calling it a hip contusion. Yeah, look, I don't know. Uh, is he going to play this season? I'm not sure now. That didn't look great. I can't, are we seriously going to have to consider Garrett Temple? Like, we're not because they don't play until Sunday, so you don't add. And then Barrett and quickly probably return then as well. But Jesus. Olenek, 13, 7, and 8. Just trucking along. Gary Trent, 18, with six assists. Wow, that's a lot for him. Uh, and the big fella. Well, maybe he's the big fella. I'm not sure. But his name's Grady Dick. He had 23 points in 30 minutes with three threes, one rebound, nothing else. The shots went down. I wouldn't be grabbing him. They don't play until Sunday. Then you're going to get what happens with the confusion of how Barrett and Quickly and all the, how everything sort of ties back into the rotation. They are very clearly not doing anything good with Bruce Brown. Three points, 20 minutes, one of three shooting. Get that garbage out of here! Jordan Wara was solid, seven and three, two steals and a block. And Javon Freeman Liberty, probably his best game, 14, five and three. Likely moves back to the bench when quickly plays, and then we can look back to Freeman Liberty later on when another uh, unfortunate injury befalls those um, those guys. Well, I'm sure that's uh, there's a chance of that happening. It could be just really bad luck. I said this already on some of the shows, but amazing stuff for Mitch Robinson as well to get back three months ahead of schedule. I just like making that joke. It's funny to me and to me only. For the next game, it was the Atlanta Hawks. They took on the Blazers. They beat them 120-106. Another big minute night from the big fella, Delano Banton. 31-5-9, two steals, five triples. He shot 57%. That is fantastic. He should be rostered. They're giving him a lot of minutes. I am absolutely frightened that you are going to get a 3 of 20 coming up because the man is not this good of a shooter, and that's about two or three big ones in a row. But he's going to put up the other numbers without any real any real worry for me. The thing is, we just don't... How long, how long do we rule out Simons for? I think it's the season, but I don't know. How long do we rule out Grant for? Eight and four. Don't think they're coming back this week, but I don't know. Very hard to project that stuff out. Tamani Kamara, really starting to step up more. 17, four and two. He's still not a huge upside player, but there's enough there with the likely absence of Jeremy to get interested in Kamara marginally for 14 teamers. Scooter had 15, 2, and 6 with two steals. Shot poorly and only went to the line once, which is annoying. But I like the assists. I like the steals. And I do think he should be on roster as well. With um, the snowman, DeAndre Ayton out, Dwap Reith had 13, 5, and 5. We roll with him until Ayton comes back. So what do you do with Grant? Well, he, he should be dropped. Simons, I think it's debatable. But again, I, I don't think he's coming back. Ayton, I'm not really sure. If I had to put money on it, Ayton's playing 50% of the games at most as we return, and maybe not even that. But I don't know. And same with Matisse Slybo. I don't think he's coming back. We did get an update, though, about Shaden Sharp, how he's going to be reevaluated in a week as he joins the team to get his conditioning up. So obviously not back this week. So you're talking maybe back for the final nine days of the season. I wouldn't be bothered adding Sharp with that. Jabari Walker had just the four points, while Chris Murray's not really doing anything. Zero points, 22 minutes. And we got uh, 39 minutes out of Ryan Rupert, who had 7, 6, and 5. They're getting a lot of minutes, these guys, Murray or Rupert, and they sort of go back and forward, but neither of them has really been able to establish themselves as a good player. For the Hawks, DeJounte Murray entered this game questionable with back soreness. He played 36 minutes. He had 33 and 7 with two steals and two blocks on elite, elite shooting. I don't think that he sits tomorrow, but it is possible. They're on this great stretch of games coming up. While Capella had 13 and 10, four steals and three blocks. DeAndre Hunter. Do you reckon he DeAndre Hunter? You're bloody right he did. 13 points, 12 shots, 5 rebounds, and a combined 1 assist, steal, and block. That is the Ryan Anderson. He does absolutely nothing apart from score. He does that at mid-volume, and he does that at mid-efficiency. And you'll occasionally get the good game, and then you get these nonsense games, which is the marker of his career. Yes, he should be rostered. They have got an unbelievably good schedule, and he is going to get good minutes. But just prepare yourself for this. This is the Vit Krejci experience as well. 33 minutes, 7, 4, and 3 with two blocks. That's actually not terrible. 
And again, with the positive schedule they have, and we don't know if Jalen or a Kongwu or Trey are coming back. In fact, I'd expect none of them are back this week. Then there is minutes there available for Krejci, but it's about accumulation of low volume, low volume numbers, not low volume categories, but just low volume stats across a ton of quality games. It was a big explosion from Garrison Matthews. He had 21 points in 22 minutes. Don't buy into that. I think largely part of that is because um, Wes Matthews didn't play, and I'm going to guess a large part of Wes Matthews not playing was because we were on the second half of, or sorry, the first half of a back-to-back. Whew, a lot of games. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Maybe you want to go to one of the many games on one of the many days across the NBA. Well, Game Time can have tickets to your favorite events, but takes the stress out of buying those tickets. Take the worry out of buying tickets to your next big event. Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat. You've got the best prize guarantee over there as well at Game Time, taking the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. That view from your seat is key. It's it's elite. You get in there, you, see, you look at the different tickets, you go, what am I going to see here? Like, What's the view like? I'm just going to basketball, my, which end am I behind? Where am I sitting in relation to the three-point line? Baseball, am I behind first base, third base in the outfield? How does everything look? You can see all of that through the Game Time app. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code locked on for 20 bucks off your first purchase. The terms do apply. Of course they do. Again, create an account and redeem the code locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, so that is, how many games down are we? Five games down? Five games down. Let's um, go into the sixth one. It was a game that we just saw the other day. The Clippers versus the Sixers. We did have a change in lineups here because uh, Kelly Oubre Jr. returned. He moved back into the starting lineup for the Sixers while Nico Batum moved back to the bench. We got another half a non-update about Joel Embiid. Basically, everything that we've thought the whole way through that maybe he's back for a few regular season games before the playoffs. That is what we've thought the whole way through. If you think that's worth holding and stashing, that is completely up to you. I do not, but I don't think we're getting him any time back before week 24. The Clippers win this one. Close game in the end, 108-107. Paul George, 22-10-4. Awesome. Jim Harden, 16-5-14 with two steals. Really good. Kawhi, not as good, but got the defensive numbers, had 17, 9, and 3. So overall, not the best games from these guys, but solid enough. Zubats played 27 minutes, which is more than expected. 11 and 4, steal on a block, and they went with less of the small ball lineup. So not only three minutes of PJ Tucker, and we got more um, Mason Plumley in this one. Russell Westbrook, um, 17 minutes, 6 points, 2 rebounds. I know you're rostering him. I know there is someone out there sneaky rostering him. Please give it up. Get that garbage out of here. What's the number? 1-800-GAMBLERS HELP? Please, what are you doing? You don't need to do this to yourself. Terrence Mann had 14 and 7. Cool, I'm ignoring that. Norman Powell, 11 and 3 in 29 minutes. Cool, we're ignoring that. These are, Mann is like a 20-team streamer. Powell's like a 12-team back-end streamer. And that, realistically, for this team is about it. For the Sixers, Maxi played a whopping 44 minutes. He had 26, 7 and 8 with two blocks. We love that. He sort of cooled off quite a bit after a red-hot start to the season, but he's still been... Um, you know, really, really strong most of the season. Some some issues, clearly, but um, some you know, big games. The Thick Hogsman, 14 and 7 for Toby Harris. And he took nine shots. Probably not quite enough, especially when old mate Kelly Oubre is jacking up 17 and missing the vast majority. Oubre continues to be, I believe, a losing player. 17 and 11 for him in 38 minutes. Two assists, one steal. Like, roster him if you want. Fine, the minutes are there, but I, I don't know. He's just, I, I just don't buy into it at all. Well, Budrick Heald played 26 minutes. A better game from him. 17 and 3 with three threes. 64%. Don't really want to buy in. What about the centers? What did Muhammad Bamba do? Well, he had 12 and 11 with two blocks. That's good enough. But he played only 19 minutes, and I don't want to rely upon him outside of block streaming. While basketball, Paul Reed had three blocks. He had seven rebounds and five points in 21 minutes, which stinks. So, yeah, Reed, I still prefer over Bamba. The minutes ups and downs are a frustrating scenario. They're an annoying scenario. And that means that at this point of the year, you do not have to hold through the ups and the downs. You can do whatever you want with Paul Reed. He does not have to be rostered. Lowry, only 22 minutes. Well, campaign played only four. He'd been getting quite a bit of playing time, old Cameron, and uh, obviously did not. 
Let's go to the next one. It was really just a gigantic victory by your Chicago Bulls over the Indiana Pacers. We had some lineup changes here. Aaron Neesmith returned. That meant Ben Shepard moved back to the bench, while Alex Crusoe, who came off the bench last game, he moved back into the starting lineup, and Torrey Craig moved back to the bench, as uh, was fully expected. The Bulls win it 125-99. The final score in this one, um, just very comfortable. It wasn't that much of a blowout until the second half, really, when Chicago started to take over. Andy Dempard for the Pacers had one of his better ones. He played 34 minutes. He had 18 and five, two steals. Like that's good and all, but I don't really, I don't really see how we can trust that at all. We also got a little eight-minute Isaiah Jackson cameo. He had two blocks. He had six rebounds. This man is an unbelievable stat stuffer. He just doesn't play. So you always got to watch to see if there's an opportunity rising for him. Tyrese Halliburton was the 11th ranked player over the last two weeks. And we said, oh, he, look, he had some disappointments. And really, oh, maybe he was higher. Maybe he was like third. Anyway, he was jumping. He was in the first round, right, over the last two to three weeks. And then he has 13, four and five on 27%. After an unbelievable first two and a half months of the season, he has been just way off. And it's, it's hard to fully understand how bad that has been. Well, not how bad, because it hasn't been dreadful, but in terms of where it was, yeah. Aaron Neesmith, 6'5 and 3, 18%. Really hard to hold him as a must roster guy. Get that garbage out of here! McConnell had 12, 1 and 4, just getting it done in those low minutes, while Siakam, not great, 29% shooting, but 14, 8 and 5. But again, this was a blowout. I wanted to see how much Jarris Walker we got. Not enough. 11 minutes, scoreless. We just keep an eye on that, but it doesn't look like we're going to get anything sort of evolving there. For the Bulls. The big avocado played 18 minutes. Andre Drummond, 14 and 11 with three steals. Vooch did seem to sprain his ankle. He played through it, but he only got 29 minutes overall, big fella. Now, some of this is, of course, there's a blowout, but that's two two lower minute games for Vooch. Now, he was still productive. 22 and 12 is good, obviously, um, but the lower minutes are a little bit annoying. He was also somehow only a plus two in a game. They won by 29. Caruso, 12, 7, 7, two steals, elite. Ayo Dusumu, 17, 3, and 4. Great shooting. Very good numbers. DeRozan, 27, and 6. Great from the field. Great from the line. Love all of those games. Well, Kobe White, again, why can't this man shoot anymore? What has happened? 18, 7, and 2 on 38% and no free throws. After a slow first two, three weeks of the season, like a red hot 12 week period, he's had a really poor stretch here. I think the hip injury may be bothering him. And maybe like we can compare and contrast him to Tyrus Halliburton. Like they're back playing after injuries that looked pretty significant. But with, yeah, we're talking about elite athletes, obviously. We're talking about guys who are finely tuned to what they do. And if something is just a little bit off in the way they feel, they move, they jump, they react, whatever, these two are like are showing that like even though they're healthy, they're not healthy. So this slight bit that's off is really causing problems. Maybe. Maybe that is just completely made up garbage. It's possible. But it just the way that they both had similar sort of core type injuries, well, Halliburton's was a hammy, but um, White's was that hip adductor sort of zone. And they've come back early. Like, White's looked like it'd be like a, almost a season early. Missed like a game, two games. Halliburton obviously came back early and wasn't ready. And they just don't look right. They just don't look right. And I don't know how else to really phrase it. They just, they're just not, obviously not the same blokes that they were before those injuries. Let's go on to the next one. It was the Detroit Pistons, the Minnesota Timberwolves. We did have some lineup changes here because the Pistons brought back Cade Cunningham, but they took Jaden Ivey out. They brought back Jalen Duran. He started over James Wiseman. Not a surprise with him being healthy. We thought there was a chance they both could be done. And they also made another change with Troy Brown Jr. going to the bench and Chemezi Metu moving into the starting lineup. The, the Wolves had put... Um, Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert on the injury report as they do every single game, apparently. But they were both ready to go and they win it easy. 106-91, the final score here in this one. For the Pistons, Cade only played 29 minutes but had 32 points. Now, the other stuff is quite limited there, but he took 23 shots, Cade. One rebound, two assists, and three threes. While Metu played 32 minutes. Now, this is the second time we've seen Chemezi play over 30 minutes. He had eight and seven with two steals and a block, and that's lovely. But the next game after he played 30 last time, he played like 17 minutes. And after the Metu, Ebuamwan, Brown, Triumvirate of whatever that is, like they just they feel like they're just going to cycle through. So while that's interesting for Metu, there's only one more game this week, a 12-game Friday. I'm not doing it. I'm not adding him. Maybe next week we consider it. With no Jaden Ivey, Marcus Sasser started. Yeah, what's going on with this guy? 
Seven points, 18%, five assists and a steal. I do not like him as a prospect. Um, but I thought he did have an opportunity here to start to put up some numbers, but he has been terrible in this time period um, and consistently outplayed by Malachi Flynn. Flynn had 14 and five, not much else there in 19 minutes, but they're not going to prioritize Flynn over Sasser, but they should based on the way that they're playing at the moment. I'm going to check this out because I think I talked about it in one of the shows earlier today. I just want to find out, like, I don't know off the top of my head, who's older, Flynn or Sasser? It's not even as close as I thought. Flynn's like uh, two years older. So, anyway, there you go. We figured it out. We looked into it, and I was wrong. Um, F11, who started, had three points in 29 minutes. Cool. Like, that's where we're at, isn't it? We're, and oh, they didn't they didn't play old mate Buddy Bayheim. That's a disappointment. For the Wolves, Gobert. Gobert? That's a, a um, melange of Gobert and Gobert. Gobert. Uh, Rudy had 11 and 14 with two blocks. Kyle Anderson only got 23 minutes, but guess what he did? He Kyle anderson 14, 4, and 5 with two steals. Again, the most Kyle Anderson man that's ever Kyle Anderson. Chinese national team legend puts up some really solid numbers with zero upside. Nas Reed. Nas Reed. 21 and 10, 31 minutes, while Conley had 9, 0, and 6. I don't think you have to roster Conley in points leagues. Category leagues, I would. Points leagues, I wouldn't. We finally got a good game from Jaden McDaniels. 20 points. Well, finally, he's had a couple recently. 20 points. He also DeAndre hunted into having zero assists, zero steals, zero blocks. But the scoring was nice. But what is going on with Anthony Edwards? Nine points on 36%. Missed both his free throws. Hit a three. He had five assists and, uh, and a steal. I, I don't know what we do with him because I feel like the last two years he's been ADP'd 20 spots higher than what his actual value is. He's ended up going early second round, late first this year. The year before that, he was like late or early 20s. And he's really never hit that mark. At the moment, he's 30th for the season. And I don't know, there's something... I I don't want to get put off Anthony Edwards. I like Anthony Edwards a lot. But he does get rammed down our throats, giggity, a lot as the face of the league, the best player here. Should he be in discussion for MVP? Like, no. He's not the face of the league. He's not any of this. Can he develop into a good player? Probably, yeah. But I do think that we, we as a collective, not me, but we, not even you, but we are out in front of our skis on Anthony Edwards. He's going to be good, probably. Probably very good. But he's also not at that elite level or remotely close to that elite level yet. Maybe he gets there. Maybe he doesn't. But he is not there yet. What about the next one? What do we do? I don't even know how to talk about this, um, this next team or this next game, really, because it's just, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, the Houston Rockets, the Oklahoma City Thunder. There was a lineup change. A couple of them, actually. Jabari Smith came back from his one-game suspension. So, Jock Landau moved to the bench. And Kaysan Wallace started because Shea Gildas-Alexander was dealing with this hip problem. The Rockets, the irrepressible Rockets, could not be repressed. They win. 132-126. What's that? 10 consecutive games? They've won. Unbelievable stuff. They won this in overtime, and they are led by the newest best player in the league, Jalen Green. The Jollibee legend, Jollibee Jalen, is going to be celebrating with a lot of adobo tonight because he played 46 minutes. He had 37, 9, and 7, 7 triples, 2 steals, and a block on 58%. Now, it's very easy to say March numbers are fake. I get that. We'd have to discount them. And we have to also understand that he's playing a lot of bad teams. And this is even a Thunder team without Shea. He played the Cavs without Mobley and Mitchell, all that sort of stuff. And you know, how many of these teams were trying? Blah, 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 blah. But the Rockets are trying. They've got a lot of stuff to play for. And he is flying. Now, I still don't love him as a prospect. It's taken a long time, probably 200 plus games to get here. But this is an amazing run. Over the last two weeks, the big fella, Jalen, is the second ranked player in category leagues. Just unbelievably ridiculous stuff. What a flip of the switch sort of out of nowhere. Because, look, this is how bad he has been this season. He's not a top 100 guy on the season for category leagues. He's not. He's That's how bad he was. And now, flying. Just doesn't miss shots. Minutes through the roof. Usage way up. Unbelievable stuff. I also like my, my man, Amen Thompson. Now, I'm fully in on this bloke being a star. 39 minutes, 29 and 15. Hit his shots from the field. Hit his shots from the line. Love it. Absolutely love it. I want them to give him a big role next season. I don't know that they will, but I want them to do it. And Fred Van Vliet had 13, 5, and 6 with three steals. 
Dylan Brooks, good game as well. 20 and four, four assists, two blocks, three threes. You cannot trust Dylan Brooks to do that. But maybe because he was in, uh, enabled, he was excited to play up against his Midwest um, uh, doppelganger in Lou Dort that he turned it on. Jabari Smith also was bad until he was really good at the end. 16 points in 35 minutes for him. Not much else going on there. I think you do want to hold him, but his recent production has not been super strong. While the big fella, Jock Landau, you can move on. Get that garbage out of here. 7-6 in 20 minutes. For the Thunder, no Shea. So we did get more Bronco Jalen Williams. He had 23-5 and 10 with two steals. He did not shoot well. A lot of his fantasy value this season... Um, yeah, like a lot, a lot of his fantasy value for Jalen this season has been on this elite shooting number. And some of that comes playing off of Shea and having Chet doing his thing. I, I, I still I don't really know where he goes in terms of game and role evolution. But this was obviously like really good counting stats. He just shot 39%. He's obviously great, putting up really good numbers. But he also, for the first six weeks of the season, was not a top 100 fantasy player and is now absolutely rolling. Uh, Josh Giddy, like this is an amazing turnaround as well. 32 minutes, 31, 7, and 4, 20 shots, 60% shooting, steal, block. He was not rosterable for three months. There's a lot of these guys doing this. Jalen Green, Josh Giddy, Jordan Poole, just three names off the top of my head who have been non-rosterable in category leagues for months and now turn it on. Gordon Haywood sort of turned it on. Best game for him, 13 points in 22 minutes. We don't roster him. While Cason Wallace did nothing in a start and Holmgren played only 18 minutes. He fouled out. He had two points with three blocks and seven rebounds. Aaron Wiggins DNP'd yesterday, which is pretty crazy, but he played 25 minutes here. He had 16 points. This is one of the most efficient players in the entire NBA, Aaron Wiggins, and probably the most efficient player that you've never heard of or never think of. Let's go look at his percentage shooting splits. They're ridiculous. You can't use him really for fantasy, but this is a nice little pop-off game for Aaron, not Andy, Aaron Wiggins. It is time for us to do the next game, which is, which game is it? It is that one, the Los Angeles Lakers taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. They played that double overtime game yesterday, the Lakers. So we thought that there was a chance that Anthony Davis would be out. There was. LeBron James returned. He replaced Spencer Dinwiddie in the lineup. And Jackson Hayes replaced Anthony Davis in the lineup. And they're the only lineup changes. The Grizzlies actually went into the game with the exact same lineup, which can't really say that very often, can we? The Lakers win it 136-124. Rui Hachimura went absolutely bananas. Now, before you get super excited about um, tall Japanese DeAndre Hunter, have a look at what he did. The two blocks are really nice. I'm not going to... It's a good game. With no Davis, it's a good game. 36 minutes is great. He had 32 and 10 with seven triples. But in order for Rui to put up numbers where you go, ooh, I wish I had that, he had to shoot 88% on threes and 79% overall. And he just isn't going to do that. He had one assist with zero steals. The two blocks, really nice. But he has these games. He has these games where he goes unbelievable and then doesn't miss. Then he has the games where he has 10 points on six shots and he's invisible. We know this. We have seen him play for years now. If you stream him in, that's totally reasonable. I'm not that interested in it. Spencer Dinwiddie had 14 and seven. That's not a bad game, but I, I'm not going to react to that too much. While well, LeBron had a nice triple-double, 23, 14, and 12, and it was solid enough from Jackson Hayes. 31 minutes for Hazy, 14 and seven, and a block on 86%. So if Davis misses, we can stream in Hayes. D'Lo had 13 points while Reeves had 13 with... Oh, sorry, D'Lo had 23 points. Reeves had 13 with 11 assists. And the artist formerly known as Torian Prince had 15 there in what was a very, very high-scoring game overall. Des Bain played 40 minutes. Des Bain had 26 points with four rebounds and 16 assists. What the actual... Last week... Was it last week? When Des Bain came back, played a 24-minute game, shot 11%, then missed the next one with a fake injury. Yeah, I think it was last week. And now we get this. What do we make of that? Same as Jake LaRavia, who has been shooting horribly, then goes, I'll, let, I'll play 32 off the bench, have 25, 6, and 4 with 7 triples. I don't know what to do with these guys. Obviously, we're rostering Bain, but why? Why is this happening? Jaron had 17 and 9. Scott Pippen, 11 and 2. Two threes and two steals. Santi Aldama, who had been playing great, just completely ignored. He had six points on six shots. GG Jackson, who'd been playing 36 minutes a night, played 29, took only nine shots and had 10 points. So when you start to think you can rely upon someone, as I did with LaRavia, and then I didn't, and then I did with Aldama, and now I didn't, and then as I did with GG, and now I don't, they just sort of take it out from underneath you. That is the problem. We also had Brendan, Brendan? Brandon Clark returning. 
played 21 minutes in his first game back from his Achilles tear and had six and five. I'm not going to add him, but I'm not going to be surprised if he has a game where it is 12 team valuable. There's just continuing to be a lot of stuff with this team that changes too often. It looks like Vince Williams is probably going to miss the rest of the season. They said they're uncertain on a time frame for him to return, but he could pop up at any point, but it is relatively safe to drop him. We also got another one minute out of Malzinha Pereira, and I reckon we might be getting close to that's the last time we talk about Malzinha Pereira in our lives. Let's go on to the second last game of the day. The San Antonio Spurs up against the Utah Jazz. Victor Weminyama returned. He moved back into the starting lineup, of course, so that meant that Zach Collins moved back onto the bench as uh, as we all expected, and the uh, the Spurs get the victory. 118-111. The Jazz have won one game since the trade deadline. Well, since the All-Star break, sorry, because they have deliberately, for the second year in a row, tanked their asses off. They'd be competitive. They look good. And they said, no, no, no. We're losing. That's what they do. Let's talk Wemby. 30 minutes, 19, 8, and 6. It says five blocks, but I, be- I believe he got a sixth block towards the end. Yeah, my box was only saying five. The one you're looking at says six. So let's go with six. Another ridiculous game. Bad free throws, though, from him. 57%. But what about the run Jeremy Sohan's on? 17 and 8, five steals and a block. 36 minutes. Now, I'm very loath to say that we're adding Sohan, but we might be adding Sohan. These numbers are great. Trey Jones, yeah, what do we do? 32 minutes is great. Nine assists is great. Two shots, missed them both. One point, uh, sorry, three points. That's very hard to consider as a must roster guy. Look, the assists in category leagues are really useful. Now, in a points league, we're obviously not doing anything with Trey Jones apart from jacking him. Get that garbage out of here! But, like, in a category league, it's very much what do you need? No Keldon Johnson in this one. Devin Vassell played 39 minutes, 31, 4, and 6 with four threes. And Malaka Branham finally had a good game. The Malaka had 17 points in 20 minutes with three threes. Not much else, while Blake Wesley, who had been playing over him, ended up with 15 minutes and one point. Bubble Champagne played 31 because the horse was out. 17 and 5 for Champagne. Just watch this guy. I think there is still something here. It's going to probably be April the 7th when somebody is not playing for three games in a row, where he does become usable. But we're getting the occasional glimpse here. Not bad, not adding, but not bad. Chetty Osman, the Discman, had 9, 7, 6 in 19 minutes with Calden out. For the Jazz, Sexton, 38 minutes. 26, 2, and 9 with two steals and a block. It's been a great, great season from Sexton after a really slow, like, first month or so. Lowry Markinen played 42 minutes. He had 25, 6, and 2. Those minutes totals seem very wrong. But are they right? No, 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 they're right. Big numbers from Markinen. John Collins, yeah, not so much. 18 and 5 with two steals. And by not so much, I mean the minutes. 23 only. The numbers are still fine. But it wasn't that Walker Kessler played a huge amount. 22 minutes only for him. 4 and 6 with a block. We're definitely getting to the stage where you're not having to roster Walker Kessler. I mean, you can, but you don't have to. A poor shooting night from Keontae George, but he played 40 minutes. He had 14 points. He had 8 assists, but he shot 42%. I'm going to guess if you've got Keontae George, your team's already bad at field goals anyway. So I, I like the minutes. I like the volume. I like the scoring. I like the threes. I like the assists but maybe you don't. And if you don't, at this point, you move on. Taylor Hendricks, again, just flashing the little bits, giggity. Eight and eight, two steals, two threes, one block. I think he's going to be a real fantasy beast in years to come. It's not quite there yet, but even though he's like, you would say he's not really doing much at the moment, right, Taylor? He's 150th over the last two weeks, doing very much, not much. If we get a scenario where Lowry is actually out, long period, could this guy go 15 and seven? Two steals, a block, three threes. Eh, maybe that's probably going a little bit too far. Let's have a look. Did Taylor Horton Tucker play? Yes. Did the Jazz lose? Yes. All right, we're still rolling. Bryce Sensible, only nine points in 13 minutes. It's the 13 minutes there, I guess, is the majority of the worry about where his value lies. All right, finally, the final game of the day. The Phoenix Suns and the Denver Nuggets. Yusuf Nurkic was out for Phoenix, so Drew Eubanks stepped into the starting lineup, and then Aaron Gordon returned for the Nuggets. Still no Jamal Murray, so that meant that Christian Brown moved back to the bench. Again, not really surprising with either of those moves. The Suns win it. 104-97 was the final score here in this one. Kevin Durant was great, which was awesome. 30-13 and 13 with three threes and five blocks, 60% on 20 attempts. Unbelievable stuff. Beal was playing through that finger issue. He only took 11 shots, and they didn't really go in. I think he is really bothered by it. 
27% shooting, 10.7 assists, a steal, and a block. So not a disastrous game, but not great. Well, Booker had 17, 5, and 9. Grayson Allen, who'd put together a couple of not good ones in a row, was back to being solid. 13, 3, and 4 with 3 threes. If someone dropped him, you do roster him. He's like a top 75 guy. Or Drew Eubanks played 27 minutes and was absolutely invisible. 5 and 4 in 27 minutes. That's, that's horrible. Royce O'Neal, nothing, 5 and 7. Eric Gordon, 10 points, 1 rebound, 20 minutes. We're not caring about those guys at all. And Bowl played only 12 minutes. The guy that got the backup center minutes was that young. He had 6 and 9 with 2 assists. We're not really doing anything with it. But what it does show us is that they're not really super comfortable in giving big minutes to Bowl most nights, especially not against Big Chungus. As for Nikola Jokic, 42 minutes. It's a lot of minutes, mate. 22, 9 and 10, 2 steals and a block. KCP, that's a very good line from him. 13, 6, and 6 with two steals, while Maga Porter Jr. had 18 and 8, and Aaron Gordon had 18 and 6. That's a lot of the same stuff. The only guy that's really available is Reggie Jackson, who had 11, 1, and 3, replacing Jamal Murray. He's okay to have. He's fine to not have. He's not going to blow you away, especially when everyone is healthy. So he's not like a super high priority sort of a player. Brown went back and played uh, only 15 minutes. It was scoreless, and Peyton Watson, with Aaron Gordon returning, just had the one block. It is a very busy day today, so I haven't gone through and done the usual um, lines of the night and all those graphics, those sort of things, so apologies. It is a little bit of an abbreviated show, but I will go through and tell you who gets those awards just quickly. Jalen Green, obviously, I would say obviously, is the monstrous line of the night. Your wave of wire line of the night is Rui Hachimura, who was awesome in this game. Elite shooting, great performance. Your young gun of the night. That's a really good question, Josh. You should have answered this before you started recording. It's Brandon Miller. It's 31 and 6 with 7 triples. And your dud of the night was, as I scroll down to the bottom, oh, very obviously, Chris Paul. 3, 3, and 4 gets you the dud of the night, Chris Paul. So if we just quickly look at this little takeaway list that I did manage to put up, I think we've got to consider at least, wow, what is that coming up? Sorry, that's uh, completely not what it's supposed to do. Let's try again. There we go. Uh, Tamani Kamara is worth at least looking at. Cole Anthony, especially for the Saturday game, is worth looking at. I think Delano Banton has got some real value here. Um, and yeah, Rashawn Holmes injured. Chris Paul, I don't think we need to be holding on to him. We've got to be really brutal at this point of the season, making sure we make um, the cuts at the correct time. And again, if you do make a cut, you don't look back. You just try to, if, then if it doesn't work out, you get somebody else in, you make the moves that you need to make at the right time. Guys, that brings us to the end of the show. So don't forget to hit that old thumbs up on the YouTube, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and then I'll be back tomorrow. Mailbag show, 3 p.m. Eastern. I will see you guys there live on YouTube. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.